I'd like to talk to you a little bit about biodiversity and extinction. I think most of us know what the term extinction means. Species are gone forever. The dinosaurs are extinct. They'll never be on the planet again. And I think a number of us are also realize that we're experiencing very high rates of extinction today. E.O. Wilson, who coined the term biodiversity in the 1980s, estimates extinction rates are a thousand times higher today than they were before humans. Nobody knows the real number, but everyone knows we're experiencing very high rates of extinction today. We don't even know how many species are on the planet. In the 1980s, a man named Norman Myers, who was studying trop tropical rainforests, raised an alarm call of extinction in tropical rainforest in a book called The Sinking Ark. And in that book, he estimated that there were 10 million species on the planet. When he came up with that number, he was kind of laughed out of the biological community. People didn't believe that there could be that many species on the planet, but he was one of the first people to really look at biodiversity in tropical rainforests. Later, Terry Irwin, who is an entomologist, an entomologist is a person that studies insects. He was studying insects in the Peruvian rainforest and based on his studies, he estimated that there's somewhere between 30 and 60 million species on the planet, which puts the previous estimate by Norma Myers of 10 million species as a very low estimate. But again, nobody really knows how many species are on the planet. We've only discovered a, a small fraction of the animals that live on the planet. And so we're gonna look a little bit at extinction through geologic time. And so this is a geologic timetable. And I'm gonna ask you to know three eras of this table. I'd like you to know the Paleozoic era, the oldest era that you need to know, the Mesozoic era, and the Cenozoic era. I refer to the Paleozoic era as the age of fishes and amphibians. And that goes from about 225 million years ago to about 500 million years ago. The Mesozoic era can be referred to as the age of reptiles or the age of dinosaurs. And that began about 225 million years ago and ended about 65 million years ago. I think you've heard of one of the periods within the Mesozoic era, if you've heard of the movie Jurassic Park. And I think most of us know Jurassic Park is a movie about dinosaurs. We are living in the Cenozoic era, which I refer to as the age of mammals. Cyno means recent, zo means animal, Cenozoic, recent animals. It began about 65 million years ago and it continues to the present. And the fossils in the early Cenozoic are similar to mammals that we see today. Mastodons re resemble elephants, saber-toothed tigers, resemble some of the large cats that we see today. So anyway, we have three eras, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. And if you look at the line between the Paleozoic and the Mesozoic, that line is called the Permian-Triassic boundary. That line occurred about 225 million years ago and that is associated with a mass extinction event where most of the species on the planet went extinct. There's another boundary between the Cenozoic and the Mesozoic called the Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary. That's a boundary, that boundary occurred about 65 million years ago and it was associated with the extinction of the dinosaurs. And so that was another huge mass extinction when the dinosaurs went extinct. And so those are two mass extinction events that I want you to be able to put a name to and a, and a date to. The Permian-Triassic boundary at 225 million years ago and the Cretaceous-Tertiary boundary 
associated with the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. We can look at estimated extinction rates, and again, these are estimates nobody really knows because we don't even know how many species are on the planet. But it's estimated that between 1600 and 1900, we were losing one species every four years. In 1950, we were, we were losing a species every year. In 1982, a species every day. And in 1992, a species every hour. If you look at a graph of human population growth and then co correlate that with the estimated extinction rates, Notice that you can see a J-shaped curve in human population growth. And as the human population took off, that's associated with a J-shaped curve in species extinctions. And so there is a, and remember a J-shaped curve represents exponential growth. So with an exponential growth in the human population, we see an exponential growth in species extinctions. So this is a table showing five prior mass extinction events. Again, I want you to know from memory the Cretaceous tertiary extinction about 65 million years ago and the Permian Triassic extinction about 225 million years ago. Um, but many people believe that we are actually living during the period of the sixth mass extinction. And this differs from all the mass extinctions in the past in that it is human caused. Whereas the five previous mass extinctions are associated with asteroids hitting the planet or climate change or other geological events. If you look at the number of species threatened with extinction today, go down and look at mammals. Mammals, 27% 20, of mammal species are threatened with extinction. Primates, humans are primates, 54% of primates are threatened with extinction today. Okay. Uh, look at birds, specifically penguins, 61% of penguins are threatened with extinction today. So again, we are experiencing right now, we are living during the sixth mass extinction, an extinction that's human caused. Uh, extinction is both deterministic and stochastic. Uh, I want to briefly talk about the difference between term, deterministic and stochastic extinctions. Deterministic extinctions are cause and effect. They're easy to predict. Uh, vultures eat carrion. They eat things that die in the ecosystem. And if you remove all sources of uh, carrion from a turkey vulture's habitat, you could predict that a turkey vulture will cease to live in that area. A uh, lot of extinctions though are stochastic or uncertain, and it's much more complex. Uh, stochastic extinctions can be due to genetic uncertainty. Uh, we will be talking about inbreeding and, and problems with inbreeding uh, a little later in the course. Um, it's also associated with demographic uncertainty, uh, random events such as fire or floods can affect the survival or the reproduction of individuals. Uh, many organisms are experiencing environmental uncertainty in terms of climate change. We'll touch on that a little bit in the course. Um, and then catastrophic uncer uncertainty, uh, fire, drought, flood. <laughs> 